Hey guys, it's Ray from RayBryant.com and in less than five minutes I'm going to show you the difference between a WordPress.com and a WordPress.org site. If you notice, if um, it's very hard to tell the difference actually on the surface between a WordPress.com and a .org blog because they both have fundamentally the same engine that drives them. The difference is how they are hosted. The WordPress.com is completely free. You don't have to pay one cent to get a site up and running with the WordPress.com. So that has an appeal for a lot of people. But the difference is what you can do once the site is up and running. Like I said, they look identical, so you don't get fooled by the fact that this looks really professional, and they both are very simple to use. And the reason why I say don't get fooled by that is because if you have a WordPress.org site, like I do here, you can do certain cool things on the side that not only are cool, which everybody likes a cool site, but they also allow search engine optimization to occur with certain widgets and plugins that you could put in this column over here. Now it does require hosting and I do recommend HostGator.com. They run some incredible deals. They allow you to host unlimited domain names and with just a couple of clicks on the mouse they could be WordPress.org um, established and set up and ready to, ready to go. So if you don't have a HostGator account already I definitely would recommend them. Go to my site RayBryant.com. Check it out and there's a link down there to save you a little bit of money and it's my affiliate link so definitely uh, I would appreciate that as well. Now the difference like I said behind the scenes with a WordPress.org site and now this is hosted through HostGator so you're getting an insider's look at what is occurring right now on my server it gives me the ability to set up folders that reside off that domain name so my domain name obviously is RayBryant.com and if I wanted to create a separate look and feel for something let's say it's a sales flyer or just an announcement or something that requires the full width of my screen I can create a separate folder which I did for this example called wordpress.org and in there just dump a basic index.html file what that will do is if I go to my blog here and I typed in wordpress.org you'll see that this does not have any of the template that normally would accompany a WordPress.com. It allows me to break out of the shell, if you would think of it that way, of a WordPress.com environment and do stuff like this. It's really cool. It gives you the ability to control what goes on this page. It gives you a full page look and feel if you want. This could be great for limited time offers or announcements, flyers, that kind of thing. That's just one little tiny example of the power between, the uh, difference between the WordPress.org and a WordPress.com. The other thing is, when you get back into it, for example, this is my WordPress.org site. And the reason why I know that is that over here, my widget bar, I have some stuff here that would not simply run with a WordPress.com site. For example, this is something called Network Blogs. I just installed this today. And you can see this line of code. I have to dump this code into this widget box over here. Now, some .com um, applications will work that are similar to this. But let's say I just really wanted this because I thought this one had a lot of potential. So I went into the Facebook application that shows it, put a widget, put our widget on your blog to verify admin access. And if you look right here, it says if you're on WordPress.com, blogs that end in WordPress.com don't support JavaScript and therefore won't render this widget. This is just a ironic example because I was just doing this today at the same time I knew I wanted to put out a video about WordPress.com versus WordPress.org. The point of this is, yes, you can still get around this, but why limit yourself to the functionality of your blog only in an attempt to save a few dollars? This HostGator account cost me, I think it was uh, 80 something dollars for the year. And it gives me all these, all this ability in here to just have several different domain names that all point to different blogs. It gives me the ability to analyze traffic to my site in greater detail than you would with a, a dot com blog. So. For me, it's really a no-brainer. The If there was any sacrifice of any sort between the two, it probably would be that a WordPress.com is completely free. It does have the same look and feel of a .org. And it might be a tad bit easier to use because it doesn't require you to access and get into your domain name hosting environment. But believe me, take a little bit of time, learn the difference, and get yourself a WordPress.org org site you'll be better in the end as a result of that if i can help you out with anything feel free to contact me here's my blog information hope this helps and i look forward to getting to know you take care have a great day